We unpack. We unpack. We unpack. Coming to your live box and ego unpack. Yeah. We unpack. We unpack. We unpack. Frank Warren hits back at claims from the farmer that he was promised money to lie for Tyson Fury in his drug testing fail back in 2015. Oh, it's heating up. This is a full movie, y'all. What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Make sure you smash the like button for the latest and greatest in boxing if you want to become part of the gang gang notification gang please hit the bell icon shout out to the super chats channel donations the venmo donations the cash app and the patreon family we working sign up for espn plus below using my link it definitely helps the channel out when you guys use that link you can get espn plus as a standalone app which i have you know get your docuseries college football you got baseball i got a lot of shows 30 for 30 top rank boxing you can also get ufc ufc pay-per-view or you can bundle it espn plus with disney plus and hulu all three apps for 12.99 a month and it does help my channel now man oh man i did a video about this i probably yeah i believe i was the first one daily mail came with some heat and you gotta catch up with that video on my channel i did um I don't know, 15, 20 minutes long. And I broke the story on the YouTube space. A farmer did an interview with Daily Mail, and I'm gonna give you the cliff notes. He basically said he was brought into the world of Team Fury, Tyson Fury, to commit perjury and lie for Tyson Fury, right? Tyson Fury and his cousin failed a drug test back in 2015. And this was actually before he won and beat Vladimir Klitschko, you know, which people gave him a lot of credit for that win because Klitschko hadn't lost. He failed and tested positive for a drug called Nandrolone, right? And long story short, this farmer came out and says, I was promised 25,000, which is roughly about 30,000 US dollars. This is the guy right here. You see him on the screen. His name is Martin Carefoot. He's a longtime farmer in the UK. And he says he got a knock on the door from a friend. A friend told him that he's in cahoots with Team Fury and they needed a big favor. Everything was coming down on Team Fury and, you know, the Furies, Huey and Tyson Fury. And they, I guess, did some research and they found out your body is produced by nandrolone or your body naturally produces nandrolone, but the elevated levels of it would have to be either you're doing the anabolic steroid or if you had some kind of tainted meat. So I guess Tyson Fury's reasoning for having the nandrolone is he said he consumed uncastrated boar, right? And it was tainted. You know, similar to Canelo with the steak, you know, I ate the meat type thing. This guy on the screen said he never even owned on his farm. He never had like a collection of boars, but he, to do his friend a favor, got involved in this and lied and wrote statements that he sold Team Fury boars and other, you know, livestock and food for their training camp, right? And then, you know, I, I'm again, I'm just giving you the cliff notes because I'm not going over the whole entire story. But basically, he got lured deeper and deeper to this because they were doing, UK was doing an investigation, then it escalated. And, you know, Tyson Fury was being looked at like, hey, you won a title, you had this Nandrolone, your cousin had it. We need answers, we need explanations, you know? So this dude is saying that it got deeper and deeper. He got in too deep. So he kept going along with it. And it got to the point where they were wanting him to testify and or make court appearances and write more letters and talk to people on the phone and getting daily phone calls and often having to cover, you know. So he says it got to the point where they needed so much 
of his assistants, they offered to give him money for committing perjury. And he says it was in the neighborhood of, as you see on the screen, 25,000, you know, 25,000 pound, which would be the equivalent of about 30,000, like I said, US dollars. But Tyson Fury, ultimately, this this strung out in court for UCAD and stuff like that. And it strung out long enough. So UCAD just gave him a slap on the wrist, a two year suspension because they didn't feel like, you know, going back and forth. So the dude is saying that he never got had to testify. He only wrote statements and was helping and phone calls. And it was coming close where it was heating up and it was going to escalate to the next level. He says he was going to be rewarded for his participation and for you know covering their tracks and saving their track they're saving their ass and whatever and he said he never seen a dollar of the money they never gave him none of the money and he helped them and and he said at the end of it he just felt used and abused they never gave him any money and he says he feels guilty he says he feels guilty they, you know they played me they double crossed me and i was you know riding with him and, you know, I did something wrong, so I feel guilty about it. He says, quote, I feel fed up with the lies and deceit. He said the public needs to know the truth. I'm happy the public know what all this is about. I feel cheated and abused. Fury and his cousin Huey, a fellow boxer, sparked controversy when they tested positive for anabolic steroid Nandrolone in February 2015, following a urine test in September 2016. Fury was accused of refusing to provide another sample for further testing. So this is all documented. And when Fury signed with top rank and came to America, they tried to sweep all this under the rug. And now it's come back to haunt him. So his co-promoter, you know, longtime promoter from the UK, Frank Warren, has responded. He has responded and he's responding to this guy's claim, this farmer's claim, who's saying that you know i never had bore i just played the played the game i was trying to help them out i got in too deep and they promised me money never paid as soon as they they kind of beat the case they you know they used me as long as they could and then that was that so he says i lied and said i supply one fully butchered wild boar pig to team fury generally every three to six weeks so he was you know he was giving them an alibi if you will because they had no other explanation for having Nan Nan Nandrolone in their system. Now Frank Warren has clapped back. I gotta bake another one. He says they were in a mess and they were panicking. This is the farmer talking. They came to me and said they had a problem. So with the Daily Mail, Frank Warren has responded to these claims and he's he's saying it didn't happen, right? He says this is Frank Warren right here. You guys see it on the screen. I'll try to highlight it for you. Right there. These allegations are totally unfounded and libellous. You are dealing with a man who is an admitted liar. Did Tyson Fury ever have a conversation with this man? Which supposed member of Fury's team did not ha did have a conversation with this man you are relying on the word of a liar did he lie back then or is he lying now this is a man who was willing to commit perjury okay i gotta bake another one smash the like button see what we have here is a failure to communicate listen for starters all this stuff happened at a time and frank warren is admitting this where he wasn't even Fury's promoter. This is happening circa 2015, 2016. So just to prove that, because this is new media and you know how I get down, let me show you that. So even though Frank Warren admitted, just to show you, boom, I'm on Frank Warren's actual website. Tyson Fury signs exclusive promotional deal with Frank Warren. Posted. April 12th, April 12th, 2018. So you didn't even sign Tyson Fury until after all this drug testing fiasco had already concluded in 2018. He was going through this in 2015, 16, and then served 
you know, they let him off with a slap on the wrist because, you know, they didn't want to keep going with the proceedings. You know, so he t he served a two year ban. And then when that was over, he signed with Frank Warren, as you can see, April 12th, 2018. So how is Frank Warren going to dictate or say what did or didn't happen? And he wasn't even present or representation for Tyson Fury. <laughs> OK, that don't make no sense. There's Frank Warren's website and it says he's back because he had just filed, you know, fought this drug thing. And then they gave him just a two year ban, you know, and then Frank Warren signed him two years later after he served this suspension. So this whole time he wasn't being represented by Queensberry Promotions or Frank Warren. Again, April 12th, 2018. So back to the farmer's story. How can you for certain say what happened and you weren't even a part of his team at that time? Strike one. The additional thing, aside from you wasn't there. <laughs> hey, hey, doggy, you wasn't there. Aside from that, the farmer is saying that he was offered this and that, right? He was offered money. He got involved. Let's look this. Let's look at this. So if this dude is so libellious and he's such a liar as they're trying to paint him, then how did he even get involved to the point where UCAD and whatever sanctioning body was investigating Fury and his cousin, Huey, Tyson Fury and his cousin Huey? Why would they have statements of this man? How did he get involved in this if he has nothing to do with it? He says, this is what Frank Warren says. He says, which supposed member of Fury's team did have a conversation with this man? It doesn't matter because that can be skipped and tell me how you have signed documents with admissions from this supposed admissions of, hey, I sold this team wild boar chopped up and I sold them some chicken and sheep and blah, blah, blah right and goat meat and what you know whatever how is how is he even involved in the testimony so what you have is you have a person a 70 year old man or roughly 70 i think they said he was 70 70 year old white male right so it's not like see this is what they try to do they try to say the black channels and this and that you have a 70 year old uk british so you can't say you black yanks and you know wilder fanboys or pbc fanboy you have a 70 year old white male farmer who has his own business who says he has dealings with Tyson Fury and got them out of the hot seat the proverbial hot seat and real big consequences you know he never would have fought if 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 this dude according to what he's saying never testified or wrote the statements which was their only alibi for having these levels of nandrolone in their system then this was before he even fought Klitschko. This was, I think, after the Christian Hammer fight, right? He tested positive. He wouldn't even fought Klitschko. And, you know, forget about the Wilder because it would have been over. So he wouldn't. The, the two biggest wins in his career are now Glovegate with Wilder and then Klitschko. And this is surfaced up. So, again, my question to you, <laughs> we unpack coming to you live. How can Frank Warren say what did or didn't happen and he wasn't even a part of fury's team two if this guy didn't supposedly speak with anyone and the allegations are just you know some guy a random crazy old man like they're trying to paint him out to be and he just wants money then why is he even involved in the testimony ucad can back this up he says he wrote statement that tells you in here i read the whole thing he look mr carefoot right here See, now this is where you guys get bodied. I didn't want to have to do this, but y'all made me. Mr. Carefoot provided a handwritten letter that same evening addressed to whom it may concern. The letter stated, quote, I have supplied uncastrated wild boar to Team Fury at Bolton on a regular basis from January to October 2015 as and when was required. I also supply rabbits and pheasant the free range chicken from time to time. So why is he testifying and, and, you know, sending letters of recommendation or whatever you want to call it 
testimony, written statements to people investigating Fury if he's just some crazy old man? How is he even involved in this then? How is there a random... See, so the, the point of it is they're trying to make him look crazy and trying to make him look like out of touch with, you know, he's always oh, he's just senile. Oh, he just wants some money. But why is he involved? The bottom line is Frank Warren's trying to make it look like he has nothing to do with this, but that's clearly not the case because he has written statements which were used in a hearing process to help clear Fury's name. Now the issue is he's recanting. So as far as Frank Warren, listen to what he said. The allegations are totally unfounded and libellious. So he's saying it's like these are fallacy. He just, you know, making up stuff is BS. You are dealing with the man who is an admitted liar. Did Tyson ever have a conversation with this man? Which supposed member of Fury's team? Let, let, hold on. Let me before I get to that. He says, does Fury, did Tyson Fury have a conversation with that man? It doesn't matter. The guy is now saying that Tyson Fury, you're on your own. You guys said you were going to pay me and you had Nandrel on your system. I was supposed to be your plug with the wild uncastrated boar, but surprise, y'all didn't pay me. I never had no wild uncastrated boar. I just said that to cover. So he's recanting. He's saying, I, I feel bad. You know, I was deceitful and the public needs to know what happened. So it doesn't matter if Tyson Fury particularly talked to him or Huey Fury or the lawyer. The bottom line is Tyson Fury is now left with Nandrolone elevated levels in his system and his cousin with no alibi, which is the only reason. This is the only thing that was said in the hearing that we know of that exonerated him. And now your alibi is gone. So imagine me being wanted for a shooting. I was wanted for a shooting and I had a friend and he wrote written statements. And then me and the friend had a fallen out. And then the friend was like, hey, just so you know, two years ago, that shooting, you know, I feel bad that I lied under oath, but he wasn't with me. I know I told you guys he was with me, but I ain't never seen ego that day. So now where was I during the time of the shooting? You see how that works? So now Tyson Fury is caught with his pants down because his only valid excuse or what we thought to be valid excuse for having these levels of nandrolone in his system have now been, you know, your alibi is shot because the dudes changed the story. Here's the other thing. This is what they're trying to do. This is what Frank Warren's trying to do. First of all, why would Frank Warren even need to respond? If this guy is so crazy, why do you need to respond? Second, there's another interview that Frank Warren did regarding this situation. I told you, I got to bake another one. Another interview where he said, oh, it's BS. This man just wants money. He hit me up in October and he said the same thing. And I told him to go to UCAD. Okay. So how come the whole world didn't know about this? He already came. He said this farmer contacted me like, yo, I'm going I'm to go to the public. I'm going to go to the public if you don't da, 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 da. If somebody don't come up with my money. And he's like, man, whatever. And then they fronted him off. Now he came to the public. So why didn't Frank Warren tell us this? Why didn't he said he already talked to the dude? The dude said he would what he was, you know, what the story was. But Frank Warren kept that under wraps. It's not looking good. Here's another thing. They're trying to paint this 70 year old white man, you know, farmer. Like he like he just, you know, suffering from dementia or Alzheimer's or something like that. But how is he on written statements that help clear Fury's name? It just, it, I'm not understanding. It's not making sense. I got to bake another one. The other thing Frank Warren said, he said, did Tyson Fury have a conversation with this man? It's really irrelevant. Neither here nor there. Whether it was Tyson Fury, whether it was Morgan Sports or, you know, his legal representative. The guy didn't say Tyson Fury was the one. He said, I vouch for him. And guess what? His alibi don't check out because the stuff that I was vouching for was not actual truth. I committed perjury. That's what he's basically saying. So it doesn't matter who said it, who know, who went to the guy's house and who offered the 25. That's irrelevant. The whole situation looks shady now. He said, which supposed member of Fury's team did have a conversation with this man? Doesn't matter. He has no alibi now. That's what we have to look at. 
the investigation needs to be absolutely reopened. And then this is this is the funny. This is my funniest part. And I couldn't wait to break this part. Frank Warren says you are relying on the word of a liar. Did he lie back then or is he lying now? This this is a man who was willing to commit perjury. See, what we have here is um, somebody trying to have their cake, have their cake and eat it, too. Here's why. In this, Frank Warren is saying the guy has unfounded, uns unsubstantiated claims that are totally false. He said, no way, even though he wasn't representing Fury at that time. He says the guy has unfounded claims. He's lying. Right. But then he's trying to have his cake and eat it, too, because Frank Warren is pinning the tail on the donkey and pegging this man as a liar, which he's already admit that he's lied. Right. So he already came clean that he was lying because he was asked to lie, which, you know, you got to judge his character and say, oh, you shouldn't have did that. Cool. I get that. But you see in this statement, he says you are OK, so. You're saying, I don't believe this guy. His claims are so unfounded, but then you're giving him the label of a liar, but you're saying what he said is BS and it, there's no truth to it. But then you're saying you're relying on the word of a liar. So how is he, how is he a liar if you don't believe wh what he's even saying? Do you guys get what I'm saying? And then he says, this is a man who was willing to commit perjury. Once again, trying to have your cake and eat it, too. You said nobody from Fury's team hollered at this dude to cover for Fury. So how is he willing to commit perjury if you're saying you do not even believe this whole story? Yeah, doesn't make sense. So he's in, you know, it's, it's almost like it's kind of like a it's like a cognitive dissonance. You know, it's almost like a double negative. You're saying all this is untrue. He's just like some crazy old man. But then you're saying, hey, you're, you're, you're trusting a liar. He's a known liar. He was willing to lie. He was willing to commit perjury. But I thought he wasn't willing to commit perjury because you're saying this didn't happen. It's not looking good. Not looking good at all. You know, the guy says, I feel sick of the lies and deceit. The public needs to know the truth. Like you, you tell me also why a 70 year old man and see this is boxing can get to the bottom of stuff but sometimes they don't want to so now tyson fury and his cousin tested positive for nandrolone and now they don't have an alibi anymore right so this is an article tyson fury fails to turn up for a crucial ucad doping hearing in london two years old more than two years so this is an old article from 2017 you guys see the title so when Tyson Fury was going through this, so this was before he signed with Frank Warren, you know, dealing with the, the legal ramifications and the due process of trying to clear his name for the Nandra loan, right? Tyson Fury fails to turn up for crucial UCAT doping hearing in London. So he didn't even show up for his to go through the process. Former heavyweight champion fails to appear before the tribunal. Fury is charged after testing positive for a banned steroid. See, why didn't he show up then? You ate the wild, uncastrated boar. Why wouldn't you show up to get this handled when you know you were going to get cleared? Because, you know, you, you said you didn't do nothing. You know, it was tainted meat. Tyson Fury has failed to turn up for a UCAT anti-doping hearing on Monday. The agency has confirmed. Athletes accused of anti-doping rule violations do not have to attend hearings in person, but the 29-year-old former heavyweight champ was expected at UCAS London headquarters on Monday morning. Members of the tribunal were sent home. I remember this whole thing because I had a channel after 3 p.m., but UCAD would not say if the hearing officially started or not. The boxer's camp did not respond to attempts to ask why he did not show up or if he intends to attend, intends to attend on Tuesday. The Manchester-born fighter, however, has made several posts on social media sites, including video, uh, Manchester Derby in Old Trafford, and a verse from the Bible. No weapon that is fashioned against you shall succeed. What does that got to do with anything? Fury and his cousin, Huey Fury, and fellow, oh, it says fellow heavyweight Huey, tested positive for the banned steroid 
which I already talked to you guys about on my ch channel, channel when I was talking about Glovegate, Nandrolone in February 20, 2015. The pair, however, were not charged by UCAD until to June the next year, which time Fury had beaten Klitschko. So Fury's win over Klitschko is now questioned, just like the Wilder one with Glovegate. Mm -mm -mm. How does this keep coming up for one man? How's one man keep having this stuff? Like, we, I haven't heard nothing come out about Errol Spence win over Kell Brook in Sheffield, Errol Spence win and unification with Sean Porter, his win over Mikey. I haven't heard someone like, oh, you know, he, he had this in his hand wrap or his wrist and fist were in the, we haven't heard nothing. I haven't heard nothing about Terrence Crawford's wins or anybody else's, you know, but Tyson Fury. Why does this keep happening with him? Where there's smoke, there's fire. A rematch with Klitschko was scheduled for July 2016, but Fury postponed the fight, citing a sprained ankle on the same day that UCAD charge was announced, which we later found out he was on coke. And he had gained weight and stuff. He wasn't, you know, taking, having, he was, there was discord and dysfunction in his camp. Huey and Tyson Fury have strongly denied the Nandrolone charge claiming the positive test so this is an old article when it when it was what happened and he didn't show up for his hearing claiming the positive test was a result of eating wild boar that had not been castrated a defense similar to the one used by cyclist alberto contador right so that's what happens when people cheat all you have to do is get on google type what you tested for and see other people who have beaten their case and see what their defense mechanism was. So he basically used the same defense as a, a known cyclist who used that when he tested positive for a steroid at the Tour de France. The Fury case has been complicated by several factors, though. Fury failed a drug test for cocaine. So there's another, uh, I, the Nandrolone he, he doesn't admit, but the cocaine he admits. So he's already failed two drug tests by this point and later admitted to using cocaine, the recreational drug, saying he did it to deal with depression related to his injury and UCAD problems. Mm -mm -mm. Having already postponed another Klitschko rematch date and facing the prospects of having his title stripped, Fury relinquished his belts, which we all already know. A day later, the BBOC suspended his license and Fury's career has been in limbo ever since. Returns to training and possible fights have come and gone. Hearings with the BBC and UCAD have been scheduled and adjourned with the anti-doping tribunal halted in August after just one day because one of the lawyers involved had a conflict of interest. There is also the issue of Tyson Fury, and this is important. Tyson Fury, look at this. There is also the issue of Tyson Fury refusing a drugs test in September 2016. So, just to put this in perspective, he failed for the Nandrolone. Him and his cousin. He claims it was because he ingested tainted, wild, uncastrated boar, which that guy who wrote legal documents and was supposed to be under oath now admits he committed perjury and he lied and he was never the plug and he never supplied him the, the meat. And he says it was a whole operation where they were going to pay him for his cooperation and that never happened. So... You know, between that and feeling guilty and wrong, he's like, F it. The truth got to come out. So he failed for that and his alibi is now gone. Then he's saying the article is saying there's an issue of Tyson Fury refusing a drugs test in September 2016. So he refused to take. So he failed and his alibi is now shot with this former newfound, you know, recanted testimony and statement. Him and his cousin now don't have an alibi. The only alibi that them and this cyclist used is now shot. In addition, he failed to take a drug test in September 2016 and then later took a drug test and he failed for cocaine, as you guys just seen above, you know, and that's what caused him to have to relinquish his belt. You see? Man, look, he failed a drug test in cocaine. And there, the this link is in the description. The link you see is clickable hyperlinks. So you can get to all of these articles. 
Shout out to The Guardian. These are all UK websites too. So there's no bloody yank bias and all that. So there's also the issue of Tyson Fury refusing a drug test in September 2016, a serious offense if proven as it would count as a positive. Just like Julio Cesar Chavez ducking Nevada test in Nevada. You know, that's why he couldn't get sanctioned to fight in Nevada or California because they had his back. That's why Eddie Hearn, another guy from the UK, took it to a different state. You know, this seems to be the ongoing thing with the UK. They really need to look into the UK and, you know, how they're handling stuff. The Dillian White, Diana Ball, you know, we don't hear about nothing for a month or years. And then they come out. The process with UCAD looks extremely broken. And, it, you know, it for sportsmanship and the sake of a clean sport, it is looking bad for the UK. The article says, given all this, nobody was predicting the speedy decision even after Monday's false start. Oh, yeah. And in addition to him and his cousin fell in for Nandrolol and their alibi now being removed by the farmer, he refused to take a drug test, didn't show up to the hearing and then failed a cocaine test and now has the glove gate situation where everybody's like man is his fist down his glove look loose it's not tied what's up why is Wilder's face look lumped up bro this looks like a history of bs and cheating mm -mm -mm. which would push the verdict back fury but fury shows no show but fury's no show has only cast further doubt on when he'll be allowed to resume his career Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. here's another one from the guardian this one is from 2016 so right around there i'm going with the old articles so you guys can see tyson fury baffled at reports he failed drug tests for the banned substance banned nandrolone and just so you guys know that's a hardcore that's an anabolic steroid because Certain things like what Billy Joe Saunders had with his alleged nasal spray when he, another UK guy, failed a drug test for his American fight with Demetrius Boo Boo Andre, and he's never rescheduled that fight and he's avoided Andre. That was legal out of competition in the UK. So the UK drug testing period or, or the process and the protocol and what's accepted is a lot more lenient than in, in American drug testing. This was also talked about when it came to Anthony Joshua. It's looking crazy for the UK. Joshua, um, Dillian White and Gerald Miller have accused him of being a TRT or like getting twos, which is like exemptions, testosterone, you know, exemptions where he's able to use stuff that normally he would flag for. You know, he hasn't actually failed a drug test, but they said it's hard. They said that's why Dillian White's on record saying that's why Joshua looks so poor in America because, you know, it's harder to get run that in that same game. Man, it's looking crazy. World heavyweight champion Tyson Fury says he's baffled by reports he failed a drug test for Nandrolone and denies any of the doping. Even though he later failed another drug test for cocaine, he's now involved in Glovegate, didn't show up for his hearing, and refused to take another drug test. The Sunday Mirror reported the 27-year-old who beat Klitschko was found with unacceptable levels of Nandrolone in a sample taken before he won the title with Klitschko. Fury's cousin, a promising contender, also tested positive for the substance. Both men have denied wrongdoing. Now, peep this. For young Forensic Files, smash the like button. Nandrolone is a male sex hormone which can be created naturally in the body, particularly if the subject has eaten large quantities contaminated with the substance. It can help to increase an athlete's muscle size, strength, and power. So that's why you would take the anabolic steroid, Nandrolone. Bodybuilders use that. Aids in recovery from injuries and allows them to train harder for longer. So it's a pure, you know, SARS. Like, it's, it's just, it's a hardcore, you know, the benefits are, I, I can't say immediate, but you'll, you'll notice it. Now, this is funny. It says, however, it can be taken as an anabolic steroid and is on the world, the WADA ban list. Among its side effects are wild mood swings, baldness, and kidney damage. Now, Fury's kind of weird, so he definitely has mood swings. And this is just circumstantial. But I've been doing some forensic files research, right? 
it says the side effects of using such a drug said drug are mood swings that's a give me that's like a bingo free spot we know fury has mood swings you know just dressed up like batman and ranting about you know homophobia and weird you know whatever we know that but look at this it says side effects could include baldness he's getting accused of using this stuff in 2015 right Let's look at Tyson Fury, who he was fighting. This is Tyson Fury's Wikipedia. This is interesting. It said one of the side effects is baldness. Right? And this is just circumstantial. I just think it's something worth noting. So around 2015, he was fighting. Let's see, 2015. That was right before the Christian Hammer fight. So he rematched Derek Chisora in 2014. Now, the funny thing is his fight right before Derek Chisora, the rematch was Joey Abel. And I, I paid attention to this because I, I was just thinking, I was like, man, so one of the side effects is balding, right? Just before. OK, so when he actually failed was be somewhere between Christian Hammer and Klitschko in 2015. Those were his 2015 fights. Just before that was Derek Chisora, and before that was Joey Abel and Steve Cunningham. And keep in mind, the Steve Cunningham, he got dropped by a cruiserweight. So maybe did he cycle on after the Steve Cunningham fight somewhere within those years because he got dropped and, you know, and was looking for some kind of edge? Because he fought Steve Cunningham, I remember that, in New York, Madison Square Garden in 2013. And look at this full head of hair you see that now your hair and balding it could be um genetics and hereditary but i remember this fight because i watched it he started singing at the end of it look 2013 he had all his hair you know fighting steve cunningham he had all his hair right so it's just circumstantial but with all the shady business recent tyson fury look fighting steve cunningham in 2013 look cunningham's bald but fury had hair look his hair looked cool you know he has a full head of hair right his next fight after this was joey abel joey abel right there full head of hair still right am i lying Look, this is Fury. Oh, he has a hat on there. Look. Has his hat. Has he, he still has his hair. Right? Young Forensics. Look. This is Fury after the Joey Abel fight. Full head of hair. And let's go back to it. So... He fought Cunningham in 2013, got dropped, which was a scare for him. Then the next year he fought 2014 against Joey Abel. And he had hair in both of these fights. Right. And then right after Derek Chisora was the only fight, the rematch for Derek Chisora. Because in the first Derek Chisora, CR, he fought Derek Chisora twice. The first fight with Derek Chisora, he had hair. But the second one, he didn't. And what a coincidence, right before the second, right before he actually failed, this is where he failed, right here in 2015, he cuts his hair in the in November 2014, a few months, that's when he first goes bald. Bro, this don't look good. I'm just going to tell you straight up. So I'm going to watch this. Watch the first. This is the first Derek Chisora fight. He had hair. I, bro, my memory is crazy. Look, look. This is the first Chisora fight. You see it. Full head of hair. Full head of hair. But then by the second one, look the hair. He, that's the first fight where you see him and his hair is just all gone. He just said, "Um, I'm getting rid of it." So is this a coincidence? Is this just circumstantial evidence that one of the side effects of Nandrolone is losing your hair? Look, first Chisora fight, 
Full head of hair. It's not looking good, man. Once again, let's do it. So he fought Derek Chisora and he had hair. I just showed you fought all the way to Steve Cunningham, had hair. Fought Joey Abel in February 2014. Right? February 2014. And then later that year, he fought Derek Chisora in November. And then now he has a shaved head. And then right here is where he failed the drug test. And once again, it says, among the side effects of Nandrolol are wild mood swings and baldness. And I'd be curious about Tyson Fury's kidneys. You know, see if he has kidney damage, if his kidneys are pumping out healthy. This, like I said, this don't look good. This don't look good. Because, I, I, you know, I was wondering that before. I was like, man, when did Fury graduate to the bald head? Because I never know. But now, that's it's looking suspect to me. I'm just being like, let me see when he fought further. Because I don't remember him, his hair ever being bald in most of his other fights. Look, look, he had hair. He had some type of hairdo. These are all the fights before the, and then look. And then now all of his hair is just gone. And it looks like he's balding. I don't know. I think with all the other stuff, this is noteworthy to, to look at that. Sunday Mirror claimed the test samples taken between February and March 2015. Okay, so they, let's look at it again. They said the samples where he failed with the Nandrolol, February and March 2015. Look, February and March of 2015. So right before here. So he he start cutting his hair right right just right before it like I said, you know. So hair 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 hair, and then right before he failed a drug test by the Christian Hammer somewhere right around there, that's when he first cut his hair. So maybe that was a side effect of it because anabolics are pretty rough on the body, and and they change your hormones and stuff like that. Because the other thing is like Tyson Fury has a brother. Because Tyson Fury and let's let's do some math. You know I, I'm just what. Because some people would say, oh, that's just circumstantial. It's um, hereditary. But he's like looking like he's losing his hair. Like, you know, like he's balding, which is coincidentally one of the side effects. So let's do some math. Okay, he was born in 88. I'm going to do some math for y'all. Look, yeah, I had hair this whole time. Google calculator. So he's born in 19. Okay, so 2015. That's when he... Actually, let me, maybe it's 2014. When he, the Derek Chisora 2 is where we first see the baldness emerge. I told you, I'm young forensic files. 2014. So, November 2014, that's where we first start seeing the, the baldness. Okay. So, let me clear this. So, 2014, and he was born in 88. So, he lost his hair at age 26. Which is not impossible, but the funny thing is, his brother, he got two brothers, and what, I, I, I got to see what the brother's name He was all in Vegas. It was the name Shane, Shane Fury. Look, he had a full head of hair, bro. How old is he? Look, this is his brother. How old is he? Cause I remember his hair, bro. He had that long, like he had long hair. So Tyson Fury loses his hair. The the you, you test positive. Okay, so let me get this straight. Nandrolone, your your alibi is ran out. The farmer says no, I didn't supply him with that. So they on their own. Now I need to see how old his brother is, cause he has a bro. He has a a whole head of hair, and Tyson Fury all of a sudden at age twenty six starts shaving his head from there on out. Look, how old is this? Tommy. And how old is Fury? Huey. Bro, look, they all got healthy, full head of hair. But full head of hair. So you're telling me it's genetics? You know? Everybody else in the family, Shane, you know, your brother Tommy, they not losing their hair. How old is Tommy? Bro, we need to start. You know, your cousin Fury. You know, I know that those genetics will be a little bit different, you know, because he has different parents or whatever. But, um... I remember his hair specifically. So why Fury start 
having to shave his head at age 26, which like I said, they said that's one of the side effects. Baldness. I don't know, man. This is I, I got to look at everything is fair game to me when it comes to this, because this is really this really needs to be investigated. This looks crazy. This looks crazy. You know, everybody else got a full healthy head of hair. Fury starts shaving his head and look like he's going bald at 26. Mm, I don't know. And the reason I, I paid attention to that is because I know people who have done steroids and their hair fell out. You know, they were not boxers. They were um, like doing bodybuilding shit. Look, see these throwback pictures. He had a healthy head of hair. You know, his dad losing hair, but he's older. You know, he's definitely older than 26 there. Right. I don't know, man. Look. One of the side effects is, is pretty coincidental, man. And I really, I specifically remember seeing his brother's hair because I was like, damn, his brother got long ass hair. And I, that's just something I noticed. So either way, the farmer coming out with his story is not looking good because your alibi doesn't check out. You know, glove gate still going on. We still investigating that. And then as far as Frank Warren, right? As far as Frank Warren, he's saying, oh, what happened? And I just proved to you guys. He says, oh, this guy, he's a liar. But you said his story is fake. So I, so he's not a liar about that because you said it never happened. And you weren't even with the team. You didn't even sign him until 2008. 18, excuse me. It's not looking good. The other thing that's coincidental, you know, circumstantial evidence, if you will. Tyson Fury and his cousin, his blood cousin, but it's a cousin, they both had unacceptable levels of nandrolone in their system. So these are two different weights, two different bodies, and really two different genetics because your, your genetics between you and your cousin aren't going to be across the board the same. So what's the likelihood that they both ate some with different blood, you know, different, um, portion size it like d does fury eat the same exact portion as huey fury do they you know the body mass the bmi body mass index do they weigh exactly the same there's a lot of scientific variables that like fury is tyson he's six nine huey fury is not that big so how they both have the same you know unacceptable levels and they have different chemical structures and body structures and then on top of that now your alibi with the farmer has holes in it swiss cheese we unpack it's looking crazy that's all i know it's looking crazy and the glove gate st is still going on we'll see how this plays out um people need to write to ucad ucad got to get on their job they got to start really looking into this stuff because it, it's this is not good it's not a good look for the sport of boxing it's not good look ahead of the wilder three fight you know old media can say the same thing oh you guys you know, the black channels and the black channel. You guys are crying all that. But this looks extremely, extremely bad. Right. Not showing up for hearings. Just everything I've said. That's all I got to say. We'll see what plays out. But I've done my part. New media. The blood ain't on our hands. We working. So if you enjoyed this video and want more content like this on the channel, you can show your appreciation by going to the PayPal donate button or the YouTube support button. And you can donate any amount that you feel is equivalent to the value of this video. Much more to come. Thank you guys for your support. Boxing Ego, the future of boxing. Yeah.